All right, we're down here in the machine shop. And as you can see, everybody's gone. All right, I've got the uh, M42 mount socket in the lathe. And this is something that people fail to do a lot of times. They'll just throw it in there and then start machining. But if you'll do this, your parts come out a little more accurate. As you can see, I've put an indicator on the face of the part and I've dialed it to where it's almost no run out. It's as close as I can get it. And what that allows me to do is machine the part true. And I've actually already tightened the chuck so it's not gonna move at this point. So now I can take my indicator off and I can machine away the excess metal here. I've gotta take about 350 thou off the face of this to get the lens seated deep enough into this mount so that it'll couple up to the camera properly and I won't lose infinity focus. All right, now that I've got this part modified, I've got it shortened 353 thousandths to make room for the lens to be able to come back far enough. Now I'm gonna move to this piece of metal and I'm gonna take it and shape it into the actual adapter that the lens will latch to. Now I know it don't look like it's running true. That's because it's not. It's irrelevant though, because we're gonna re-true the whole thing. Right now I just zeroed out my Z OD. The outside has to be cut to 1.810. Alright. <clears throat> That's cut a quarter of an inch longer than the part's going to be when we're finished. And we're currently at 1972. Now yeah, we should be around one eight fifty. One eight forty eight. That should put me pretty well on dimension. Now, let's see if our part will slip on. Part ain't round. Isn't that neat? I'm gonna have to take a little more off. <laughs> I want this to be a really good fit in this adapter housing. That way, it, there you go. Nice and smooth. A little slides right in like I want. Perfect. All right. I want this to be a good fit so that it'll maintain radial alignment. There's virtually no side play, but it slides freely. That'll allow me to set the, the gauge line pretty accurately. It shouldn't go all the way to the bottom. But yeah, now that's done. Now we move to the inside. All right, now that we've got it drilled. Okay, try to See, it's See, we still have 55 thousandths to go. Now we're going to 
we'll cut it off so we can turn it around and cut the other side. I'm just using cutting oil because I'm too lazy to turn on the flood coolant. And it's a lot less messy. It doesn't sling it as far. Remember how I said we check the front face of the other side of the part? Well, we're gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna get it up here on it. Get a little seating depth. And we're gonna check it, see how far out it is. There we go. It's about three quarter of a thousand. I'm gonna live with that. I think that'll actually work just fine. Now that we've tightened it, let's see if it, what it rolls out. Less. Man, that's rolling true. Nice. Okay, well, that's done. That was a lot faster and easier than I was anticipating. This side gets a counter bore that goes up over this flange on the lens and then this goes down to the plate surface where these teeth will go through. There'll be a real ring left on the inside and it, where these teeth will go through and then you can turn and lock it. Um, I've debated on whether I want to run them teeth in a mill or if I just want to cut them with a file. I've just about decided to do it with a file. I think I can reach through from the other side with a sharpie and mark where they go easily enough or even take some uh, transfer grease and just touch it and transfer these mo locations because this right now isn't timed at all. So it doesn't really matter where them teeth are in relation to this part other than on that face. But I can actually transfer them and then just scribe the edges of these teeth notches. It'll be a little thin wall of aluminum. Won't take but a minute to cut out with a file, so I'll probably just do it with a file, save myself the setup time in the middle of the machine. It'll go a lot faster that way. But that's what's next. I'm gonna cut the counter bore. It'll come up past this bayonet up over this flange area to try and kill some of the light leak on this side of the mount. There's this notch where it's got the alignment dot for when you put the lens on the camera. And I'm hoping that this covers it enough that that ain't gonna be an issue because it's it rotates around, as you can see, it rotates through this range of the bayonet where there's a big opening. But see, that goes over, so hopefully there's enough turns in the light there that we won't have a problem with this. I'm just cutting this by hand. I'm not power feeding because there's no point in it. It's not going that deep. It don't take that long. There's depth on that cut. And I've only got 45 thousandths to go. There's our final cut. We'll run power feed this time. This lathe has got an issue with the power feed. The clutch on the x-axis has got some wear in it. We're probably going to have to adjust it for long. I think it's going to be a pretty major undertaking to do that, too. Kind of dread it. Interesting. 0.375. To that journal.
So what I've done is I've marked all three of these tabs inside this ring and uh, that's gonna allow me to just take a file and quickly cut these sections out and I'll be done with that segment of it really quickly. I don't have to spend a lot of time on this now. Okay, I've got it to where it fits over the bayonet lugs but it's bottoming out on this flange. I haven't got this distance from the back of the lug to that shoulder right. It's too long apparently and I've got the clearance to clear this flange, but I'm hitting the edge of the focus helicoid. So I'm gonna have to go over and do some more measuring and then apparently take some more off of it. It ain't quite reaching yet, so I'm that close. Seems I've made a mistake on a pretty large scale with this little lens. I looked and I, I've got focus. You see the focus helicoid moving, right? Well. I done all that measuring, I made this adapter, and it it technically works, okay? Herein lies the problem. As this focuses, I don't know if you can see it or not, but the bayonet itself rotates with the focus knob. Now, I don't know if you understand what a problem that is, that's why the Argus mount, the whole mount rotates. It's got a pin that goes in here in, in this black focus barrel that keeps it from turning and the whole mechanism rotates outside of it, moving the focus in and out. That causes a problem because now when I install my adapter, it locks the lens in whatever focus you pick. So if I do hyperfocal distance and I set it to say F, F11 to 50 feet, then from 50 feet to about seven feet, it's pretty well in focus with the sweet spot landing around 12 feet. So if I stick this on here and it drops right on just like it should, and then you turn and lock it, it locks the lens up tight. Now I still have aperture control. So I, I and since I've done hyperfocal distance, I would set it to f11 and that'll give me that range of focus from near infinity to about seven feet and then this slips up inside of that and now i can actually set the flange distance for infinity focus but now here's the problem it's infinity focus on the flange so now what i really need to do is set this basically in the middle of the scale put me a thumb screw on this adapter so I can loosen it, move the whole lens in and out to get focus and then snug it. <sighs> what am I supposed to do? <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is before I go to the trouble of locking all this down, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick a set screw in this so I can just set it and get the distance set to where I can actually play with it at hyperfocal distance, you know, and I can focus with my feet and walk back and forth. And I just want to test the lens out, see how well it works, because I've got it all in there and it mounts up. I just don't have focus. It didn't occur to me that the actual bayonet rotates with the barrel. I painted the inside, I sandblasted it to matte finish it, and then I painted the inside black with a Sharpie pen to matte it down some so that it will have less reflection. Then we stick that on there. I've drilled and tapped a set screw hole in this. This outside is inside this band, so you can't really, it's not gonna cause a problem. And there's that. And now we have our set screw that we lock our focus with. And I really didn't pick a good spot for that. And it's on there. You can actually focus it with this screw. You loosen that screw and you move the whole thing in or out to, to focus and lock it. <laughs> That's just, bad engineering on my part <laughs> it's going to be somewhere in about that range so let's go stick it on the xt3 and see what it looks like as evidenced by the headlamp i thought it was going to be dark when i came out of the machine shop i was wrong <laughs> it's still daylight <sighs> figures all right we're going up here to get the xt3 we're going to stick this lens on it and see if we can get a decent picture out of it can't believe i didn't realize that the bayonet rotates with the focus ring and why would they do that 
That makes it for an overly complicated mount design, but whatever. Work with what you got. I've got my homebrew lens assembly on the camera. So what I'm gonna do is, I have to dismantle it to move the focus on helicoid. So I'm gonna set it to three feet. Set the aperture to f2.8. Let's see if I can get the GoPro in. Right there it is. That shot wide open at ISO 6400. Let's see, yeah, there's some ISO noise going on. <laughs> there we go. Basically I'm focusing it by moving it in and out of the barrel. Jericho. Let's see how that turned out. I'd call this a 50% fail. 50% because I can't focus it with this barrel like I wanted to. I honestly could make another one of these adapters and thread it, and that way as I turn it, it would screw it into and out of this housing, and it would give me focus. It would, it would act as a focus helicoid. I thought about that after I'd done all this other. That's kind of frustrating. <laughs> Okay, I appreciate you guys watching and we're gonna do a, another modification to it and that'll be in the next installment. And then we'll have some photos and I'll do a technical lens review. All right, so if you haven't done it yet, I'd appreciate the subscribe and a thumbs up if you like the video. And until next time, get your camera out. Go take a picture with it, all right? We'll talk to you later, bye-bye.